So let's uh, now dive into our project of the week, which is these gauntlets for the same character, Garnet, that I built the palm gems for last week. So let me pop open uh, my Firefox here and show you what we're making. So here is the character Garnet, and she, when she needs to battle, this is her weapon. She uh, basically grows out of thin air these huge gauntlets, and her fists get all big inside of them as well. Uh, so I thought this would be a fun project to build using the um, Circuit Playground Express. Because we have an accelerometer built on, we can do um, punch detection or you know shake detection that will allow us to do a sound effect and a light effect when we encounter that rapid shift in uh, one or more axes on the accelerometer. So let's jump back actually into our make code and I'm gonna hop into a different tab here. Uh, oh, there's the color I wanted. Yeah, that's the one I set it in. Kelly, you see that? See that nice green, folks? That's what we want. Uh, let me just adjust my cropping so you can see that a little better. There we go. Uh, and shoot that over here. Good. Okay, so um, this is our formerly green so that we can't see through it. Now this kind of blue-green block. This is our start loop. So what we're going to do is we want to create code so that our um, Circuit Playground Express, when it's uh, running, it's going to be a uh, yellow glow. So we're gonna use this to sort of backlight, backlight the star on the gauntlet that we make. Um, so what we're gonna do is right away, we're gonna set the brightness up to pretty bright. I'm setting it to 120, which is quite bright. Usually I leave these at 20, uh, maximum is 255. So I'm gonna set the brightness of the NeoPixel ring, that's what that's referring to, is the 10 NeoPixels running around the outside of the board. Uh, to a value of 120, and I'm gonna set them all to yellow. Now, you may have seen, sometimes I'll use this show ring block, which is nice if you wanna do patterns, um, but when we're just setting everything to the same color, I'll throw that away, and I'll just use this guy right here, the set all pixels to uh, yellow block. So, oh, I just realized I'm, there we go. Hi, it's me, uh, behind the make code. Uh, so. The other thing you'll see I'm doing here is I'm setting the tempo. So I'm gonna play some, uh, sort of a sound effect, but the way I wanna play the sound effect is, um, there are kind of two ways in Make Code to do this. One, you can use uh, a drop-down item or a drop-down item from a list uh, that is pre-made canned sound effects or songs. Uh, so if you head to music, you can see we've got these play sound, uh, there's power up, Power down, jump up, jump down, ba ding, wah 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 wah, magic wand and siren. And they're very nice, but I also have gotten a little tired of them. So rather than use one of the canned ones, I just want to make a little sort of power up sort of glimmery sound. So I'm going to do that with the um, music notes or tone, play tone instead. So when you're using that play tone, you want to set the tempo. Uh, so I head to music and I find the set tempo to, in this case, it defaults to 120. And I'm gonna have that, I'm gonna set it to 60 beats per minute. So that's all I'm doing in the startup block. And then to use the shake, what I'm gonna do is in input, you can see the second block here, it says on shake. So if I drop one of these in, you can see we've got uh, shake, which is a sort of a black box of, well, it's, it does what it says. When, when the accelerometer experiences a rapid change of, of high values, that's probably because it's being shaken. So that one's pretty reliable, but you don't have a lot of options for tuning it, and it'll work great in this case. You can also use things like um, just checking the gravity, essentially what's the high magnitude value uh, on which axis, x positive and negative, y positive and negative, z positive and negative, and those are tilt up, tilt down, tilt left, tilt right, face up, face down. Uh, there's also a free fall, which detects uh, the, I guess, rapid change of whichever one was getting around nine, uh, was it feet per second squared, uh, set to zero because it's falling through space. And then you can also set to three Gs, six Gs, and eight Gs. So we're gonna just get away with using shake in this case. So I've already got a shake block here set up. And then what happens when we shake, I wanna set um, kind of a flash of light, so I'm setting all the pixels to white, and I'm also boosting the uh, brightness up to 255. Then I'm playing this little song. So if you uh, click on 
the play tone uh, value of hertz, um, so that's the frequency in cycles per second, uh, you can play notes on this little limited uh, input piano keyboard and you can see the highest note you get is this high B and it's 988 hertz, so it's not very high. Uh, so I boosted these up to, what did I do, 3000 and then I'm dipping down a little bit so I'm going beetle little little kind of noise like that. Uh, and I'm doing these very quickly, so 16th beats, and then the last one I'm holding a little longer, which is this quarter note. Uh, and then after we play that sound, we're going to set all the pixels back to yellow, and we're going to drop the brightness back to 120. So that's the little cycle. Now you can see over here in the simulator, uh, if I add a on shake block, I actually get this um, shake button. Oh, thank you, Mr. Certainly. It's 9.8 meters per second squared, not feet. It's 32, right, for feet, something like that. Um, a quick aside, this used to really screw us up a bit in the, uh, when I was uh, in my earlier days of computer graphics and visual effects, there were two pieces of software that combined, Wavefront and Alias, and one was a Canadian company and one was an, a, a US company. Uh, and some things in the software were working in metric and some were not, they were imp imperial, and, and a lot of the effects stuff was, defaulting to like 9.8, but it actually wanted you to type in 32, and it didn't tell you what the units were. So, uh, yeah, the, the metric versus imperial crops up in funny places. Uh, so if I click this shake button over in the simulator, it's as if I've shaken it, since they didn't want you to grab and shake the Circuit Playground Express violently in the interface. But when I click shake, you'll see it's going to do the light thing. We're not hearing the sound right now because I don't have it piped through the system. Uh, but we can check it out on this one. So let me um, plug some power. I'm going to steal that from our little matrix display here and plug in power into the Circuit Playground Express. And let me get myself a little bit of extra length on that cord. So uh, I just pressed the reset button so it would restart the program. So there you can see that's the yellow. Uh, it's quite bright, and then I'm going to shake it, and you can listen, right, and you saw it flash. Okay, so it takes a bit of tuning uh, of, like, the timings and how many notes you want to play, what the beats per minute are, what the, the tempo is going to be like, as well as the, uh, do you need a delay uh, to, to, to actually register the light. A lot of times, if you add delays, it's just too slow. You, you want an effect like this to be pretty quick. Um, so that is the, the coding side of it. Uh, you probably know I'm a big fan of this case that we have, this enclosure for the Circuit Playground Express. Um, and so that's what I have it mounted in. There's our default Circuit Playground Express, and I'm just putting it inside of this little uh, plastic or polycarbonate plastic case. And you don't necessarily need that for this project, but I do find it gives you a lot of great light diffusion from a bunch of angles uh, compared to the bare NeoPixels. So um, it's, a, it's a good one for these types of prop things. It makes it look a little less like a bare circuit board and more like a, a finished uh, or partially finished prop or cosplay element. Uh, in fact, I know uh, Ms., uh, Old Crow said that his son is into Steven Universe, and I know that if you ever want to do Steven Universe cosplay, I think you just need a short t-shirt and to glue one of these to your belly button, because he's got like a, a glowing gem in his belly button. <laughs> so there's a free, uh, very, nearly free, very quick and easy um, uh, cosplay emergency costume idea. So now what I'd like to do is step on over to the workbench, and we'll have a look at building up a... Uh, gauntlet so that you can uh, wear this on your wrist. So as you can see from the overhead camera here, and I'm going to step over there, uh, we've got craft foam here. So uh, let's, oh, let me use my nifty changer to go to the main camera view and the bench overhead. Uh, so step over here. The um, You've got a lot of options for building the gauntlet. What I did was I started out just in some uh, cardstock. So I took some cardstock uh, and folded it into this shape. You could get away with a coffee can or some like a big protein powder plastic jug kind of thing. 
Um, but I decided to just sort of prototype it in paper. Uh, and I was thinking originally of doing fingers because there's these bent or straight fingers and I had, had my reference. So I printed out um, some reference to look at. Here's some fan uh, grabs, I think, from the show that, or from a video game that are used for people who are doing cosplay. There's a couple of different designs that the uh, um, color styling has evolved over the seasons. But the um, main sort of uh, element here is this gauntlet part, this tube or cylinder. Uh, so I decided something around this size would be good and it would allow us, uh, let me grab my circuit playground express that I just left behind. So I decided this would give us uh, a pretty good size of the cuff versus the, the star that we're going to light up. Um, and that gave me an idea of the type of size of material I was going to be looking for. Then I headed to a craft store and I picked up a bunch of this um, craft foam. So this is this soft, flexible, clo close-celled uh, craft foam. And you can see it really quickly uh, works itself into the type of shape that we need and size that we need. So I figured, yeah, some of this would be great. Um, one thing you can do if you want is uh, buy enough of it to double it up to make it thicker, uh, especially if you were to use some adhesive and make kind of a two-ply out of it. That would be a, a sort of a nice thick um, piece of material for the structure. I went with a single piece of it, but I decided to reinforce it at the bottom and the top. So if we start off with, I'm going to use this scrap piece here, uh, and I'll switch over to the bench view. So if we start off with something like this, um, I'm going to just make a little mock-up version here. What I did was, uh, there's a craft foam glue that's, that's designed for this, and it works well, but it also takes about a day to cure. Uh, and I don't have that kind of patience. So I used it in a couple of places, and then... Uh, after clamping and letting it dry, I said, forget about this. I'm going to use some mechanical fasteners and I'm going to use hot glue. Uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm just using a little uh, scribe tool to poke a hole through. And then we have these great little um, plastic rivets that are sold as cardboard rivets in the Adafruit store. And they work great for this. So it's just, it's just a little pop rivet. Um, I can push that through this material and it'll go through probably five or six layers of this stuff. So if you have a built up area, uh, it'll work really well. And so all I'm doing is pushing that through and then there's a little receiving cap that'll head over the split end. And there you go, you get a, a really nice uh, connection. You may or may not like the, the black contrast. It doesn't match the character exactly. So you could paint over that later with some uh, acrylic craft paint. Uh, or use some red gaff tape or something like that to hide those. But that uh, works really well, especially if you don't have the patience for glue. Uh, or you could use it in combination with, with the glue. So that's how you would... I won't set that third one in there. So that's how you'd start out. And then um, since this is kind of floppy, what I wanted to do is I wanted to have a, a way to mount the battery pack on the inside and the Circuit Playground Express on the other. So I cut a thin um, sort of strap of this material and you can use, um, you can be a little more careful and use a straight edge. But that'll be good enough for this demo. Um, and you'll probably want to use a cutting mat and not your table. <laughs> so what I did was I just fed a strip of the same red foam rubber through the back of my Circuit Playground Express case and then glued that. So this is one case where I didn't want the pop rivets, uh, so I just used that craft glue and uh, I made some clamps with some spring clamps and some thin pieces of wood so it would be large enough to set that on and clamp it down while that dried. So now that's on there really well. You can peel this off if you need to, but it's not gonna go anywhere. And then on the inside, I cut a little slit and hung my, my battery pack, and I'll show you that on the finished uh, one 
uh, in a second. But so once I had this on here, uh, I realized I didn't want it sort of banging around on my wrist a lot, so I needed a way to center it as well as to give it some structure. So I decided to take some uh, foam core. So this is some black sided or black faced foam core. Uh, and you can see what I did. I took my cuff and I just traced it out with a pencil and cut it carefully with a hobby knife. And now I have a cap to put on either end. And then I cut the um, uh, centers out until I could fit my fist through and then a little bit wider for my wrist. So that is how we got to this. And you can see I added some decorative uh, bits. There's these little diamonds on the ends uh, of the knuckles. But here you can see those are my um, foam core. You could paint this in, in black if you didn't want anyone to see, see the edges of that. You could neaten that up maybe with a Sharpie or some, some paint. Uh, whoops, and same with the top. Right inside of there, you can see there's my battery pack. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And you'll see now our uh, glowing star. I just cut out a, a foam star and used a little hot glue. And that was the other thing I was gonna say is when I got tired of waiting for uh, the proper glue to cure or to dry, a tacky glue, I decided to try little dabs of hot glue. I don't want to melt through this stuff, so you don't want to use a lot of it, but with little dots of hot glue, things stick uh, really well. So these pink stars are on with the hot glue. Uh, my foam core discs are in there with a little bead of hot glue running around it. And I also used the hot glue to get the star on there. So now you can see I can uh, let me switch cameras here again. So I can set that on my wrist and big vision. Now when I punch, I get that nice uh, punching effect. And now you have a pretty easy to make uh, prop for garnet. Uh, you could do, I, I started looking into doing different types of hand, uh, like fist enlarger things at the ends. I started to use that same uh, technique with the rivets to make something that maybe would come out of that hole and be a giant fist like that. I didn't love it. Uh, I didn't really want to make tubes and, and notch them into knuckles. Uh, a lot of the cosplay props I've seen people have used toilet paper tubes and cut them at careful angles to put some 45s in them and, and make large painted tubes. So that's definitely uh, a possibility. What I decided would look pretty good in this case, especially if you're going for a simpler build, is I happen to have a red glove. A uh, pair of these, so some fleece gloves will work pretty well and I think get the point across. You could dress those up more if you want, but that is my Garnet's Gauntlet with reactive punching power. So let me see if I can keep that on while I head on over, Let's see if I can use a mouse with that, uh, with that glove on. There you go, you can see that a little better that way, let me get this out of the way. So there is a pretty quick and easy Garnet's Gauntlets. You could make a pair of these if you want, and uh, you could also get, oh, that's a good idea. Uh, Seagrow says, use a hockey player's glove. I was wondering, what are some good starting point things? Um, I even was wondering if I could get one of those giant Hulk foam fists and paint it up, but those are a bit uh, veiny and muscular and, uh, and overly detailed for this sort of cartoony look. Um, but definitely, I think that'll, that'll pass muster uh, to, to any fan as a Garnet Gauntlet. Uh, and you could get much bigger with it if you wanted to, but uh, I thought this was, like I said, a nice size for the uh, available Circuit Playground Express size. So that is our build for the week. I think it's uh, a fun one, and if you uh, want to work on that project or work on it with someone, I think uh, you could help someone learn a lot about using microcontrollers in projects and coding inside of make code, which makes it really nice uh, and easy to get started with this type of project and then customize it. Uh, there's lots of different colors you could pick. You can make different songs and sound effects. So that is the project of the week.